Hello everyone, welcome to today's video of Easy Neuro. Today's topic is Propagation of Action Potential. Now in our previous video, we discussed that action potential is basically a brief reversal of the resting membrane potential when the inside of the neuronal membrane will, be, will become positive, okay, because of the influx of sodium ions, all right. And uh, we also discussed the different stages of action potential, right? So there was first the crossing of the threshold, then there was depolarization, right? And then it reaches the peak voltage. And then there is the repolarization, which is because of the opening of potassium channels. So there is potassium outflux. And then there is hyperpolarization because of the slow closing of potassium channels and then there's finally the resting membrane potential again achieved right and we um, also discussed about the refractory period right and the two types of it which is absolute and relative okay so today we will learn what are the two types of propagations of action potential so the there are basically two types there is a continuous conduction of action potential and a solitary conduction okay so continuous conduction is basically the one which occurs in unmyelinated axons. Okay, so axons which do not have a myelin sheath, okay, are unmyelinated axons and they have a continuous conduction of action potential. All right, now how that works is, let's see. So this is the resting membrane potential when there is positive um, charge on the outside and negative charge on the inside of the neuronal membrane okay so this is the resting membrane potential all right and we also know that this is the lipid uh, bilayer cell bilayer right where we have the ion channels and uh, the voltage gated ion channels the leak channels the sodium potassium pump okay so this is the condition in the resting membrane state now what happens after a threshold comes okay so once a threshold comes all right and there is depolarization which occurs okay so depolarization occurs when the voltage it crosses minus 55 and it moves towards the zero okay so that is when depolarization occurs and that occurs due to the opening of voltage gated sodium channels and there is influx of sodium so what happens in continuous conduction is that okay, so this is the external this is the in, intracellular side of the membrane so in one segment okay so let's take this as one segment okay so what happens like there will be opening of the sodium channels in this place okay so what will happen at this place the inside will become positive and outside will be negative okay the inside will be positive and the outside will be negative and this is due to the opening of the sodium channels okay so the inside of the membrane all right will become positive and outside will be negative right due to the influx of sodium ions all right so this is called depolarization okay so depolarization will happen here due to the opening of sodium channels but the rest of the membrane okay so the rest of the membrane will remain the same like in the rmp okay so the rest of the membrane will be positive on the outside and negative on the inside it's just that in one segment this depolarization occurs okay then what happens how this flow will actually happen is that the sodium ions will flow okay so it will then propagate the uh, action potential to the next segment okay so in the next segment that is here okay so again this is external this is intracellular okay so in this segment that is the second segment okay the influx of the sodium ions in the first segment will cause the depolarization in the second segment okay so this will get now 
depolarized so there will be negative charge outside and positive inside all right so over here then the sodium ions will come but what happens to this place the first segment okay this goes into repolarization so this segment experiences repolarization now so repolarization is when there is opening of the voltage carrier potassium channels so there is potassium outflux okay so this place will then get repolarized this place will be depolarized again the uh, the influx of sodium ions in the second segment will cause the third segment now to get depolarized all right so let's look at the third option so this is the third segment right this part will will now get depolarized okay inside that is intracellular will get positive extracellularly will be negative in this segment okay talking about the second segment now the second segment will go into repolarization okay so there will, will there will be outflux of potassium okay repolarization will happen okay in this place there will be again influx of sodium because of depolarization and what will happen to the first segment now the first segment will enter the resting state okay so the second so the first segment will now just be at the resting membrane potential that is outside will be positive and inside will be negative okay so this is how actually the action potential will propagate in unmyelinated axons so in unmyelinated axons what happens once the threshold like once the threshold has been crossed like once the stimulus has come okay the opening of the sodium channels will cause the threshold to be crossed okay and this influx will cause then the second segment to be depolarized okay and the first segment will go into repolarization right and then the influx of sodium ions in the second segment will cause the third segment to get depolarized the second will get repolarized and the first segment will go into the resting membrane state so again this place can then again be get uh stimulated okay okay so the property is that it uh some of the um characteristics of uh continuous conduction is that there is transmission along the entire length of the axon okay so the whole axon will um help in the conduction of action potential that is why it's called continuous conduction okay it is also a bit slower as compared to solitary conduction because there is more uh, ion channels which are involved okay so more number of channels have to be open that's why it's a little bit slower and also there is a higher energy in expenditure again because of more opening of channels that is why more energy have also has to be used okay because the sodium potassium pump also has to maintain the rmp right so it has to spend more energy because more channels have to be uh, converted back to the resting state right so that is why now let's look at the saltatory conduction okay now saltatory conduction occurs in myelinated axons okay so axons which have the myelin sheath will have the saltatory conduction so myelin is basically the fatty layer right the insulating layer which is made up of proteins and lipids okay and it helps in the faster conduction of action potentials okay and also prevents the leakage of the signals okay so we have this uh, neuron here it has a myelinated axon okay now what happens in these cases is that the the action potential it jumps from node of Ranvier okay from every node of Ranvier it jumps to the next one okay so what you see over here okay so these are the node of Ranvier okay so these are the gaps basically okay the places where the myelin sheath is absent okay so once the uh, stimulus comes and the action potential is being generated in the axon hillock okay what happens is that again this part this node of Ranvier will get 
depolarized okay so what happens there is again influx of the there is influx of the sodium ions okay so the sodium ions will open channels will open and they will cause the influx of sodium and the outside will get will get the negative charge now these ions will then flow to the next node of Ranvier. okay so rain they don't flow they will the channels which are between the myelin sheath okay in this part of the axon they don't get open because they are very less in number okay so it just basically the sodium ions will pass through the axon go to the next node of Ranvier and then depolarize this node of Ranvier. Okay, so this node of Ranvier is initially at resting state and then the channels will open here. Okay, so it will open the channels here and then again cause this one to get depolarized and then so on and so forth it passes on. Okay, so it passes on from node of Ranvier. Okay, like this. Okay, so it will pass on from each node of Ranvier. Okay, so that is why it's called a solitary conduction. Okay, solitaire basically means to leap. Solitaire is a word which basically means to leap. Okay, so there is the action potential is basically leaps from one node of Ranvier to the next. Okay, so this is called solitary conduction which occurs in myelinated axons. And then it's the same that this once the sodium ions will pass to the next, this will get repolarized and then it will again go back to its resting state. All right. So again, the some of the characteristics of this is that there is the transmission is between the nodes of Ranvier. As we discussed, there is a leap of action potential to uh, from one node of Ranvier to the next. It's also faster because there are less number of ion channels which have to be opened. Okay. So only a small portion, you know, has to be depolarized. Okay, so there are less ion channels involved. Okay, so therefore it is more faster also. And there is a lower expenditure of energy. Okay, because of low channels which are opened. Okay, and therefore less ATP also has to be used by the sodium potassium pumps to um, maintain the channels at resting state. Okay, so these are some of the differences between continuous and solitary conduction and this was the uh, description of the two types of propagations of action potential. So I hope you liked today's video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. Till then, thank you very much and see you next time.